live from Santa Clara in the heart of Silicon Valley. It's The Cube, covering Cloud Foundry Summit 2017. Brought to you by the Cloud Foundry Foundation and Pivotal. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, joined by my co-host John Troyer, and there's nothing we love more when we're at the user conferences to actually be able to dig in and talk with the users. I want to welcome to the program Opal, Opal Perry, who is a divisional CIO at Allstate. Uh, did the keynote this morning, uh, really good community here. Uh, I know they were excited to hear your story, and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, it's great to be here with you. So, so Opal, we hear this you know, term, uh, you know, uh, the digital transformation. Uh, and some people think it's just a buzzword, but uh, you know, you talked in your keynote uh, about the transformation that's going on in your world. Uh, why, don't, why don't you give us uh, kind of a quick overview of you know, your role and uh, what, what this transformation's been? Sure, so I've been with Allstate almost six years, and I'm one of the vice presidents on the technology leadership team. So we both work together as a whole team on initiatives that affect the entire enterprise, and then my particular day-to-day -day focus is, is divisional CIO of claims. You know, we're a large insurer, the number one publicly held insurer in the U.S., and uh, we support claims for auto, property, all state business insurance. Uh, so it's an outstanding time to be in the business because there's just so much going on in technology. There are so many uh, emerging areas, and particularly when we are able to knit them together to serve our customers from an insurance, protection, restoration standpoint, it's really uh, really powerful. We do say and hear transformation so much that it feels sometimes like an overused term, but um, I haven't found a better word for it yet because um, I think things really are transformative. We've been used to for many years in the industry change, right? Continuous improvement, we're always trying to change and get better. But what's happening now with this convergence of forces is truly transformative. We're not just replacing one way of doing things with a slightly improved way, we're changing the way people interact and serve the customer. And Opal, what was, what was the driver for this change? Was, was there a pain point or uh, you know, competitive pressure? What, 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 what drove this change? At Allstate, it's all about the customer opportunity. As I mentioned this morning, we've got 16 million customer households, and uh, that's just a tremendous responsibility, also a tremendous opportunity. So to us, it was thinking about, how do we bring the forces of this great 86-year-old company to bear and use the digital and technology changes emerging and really uh, do that in support of giving our customer a better and better experience. How do we protect them? How do we restore them? Uh, as, uh, <clears throat> as you were making this uh, uh, transformation to, you know, and you, we're here at the Cloud Foundry Summit, so interested in the Cloud Foundry story, uh, how uh, some of that decision process, you know, we, it, they, we've, obviously the tech is really cool, uh, A, and so was this coming out of the developers? Uh, first, the technologist first, or was uh, was it more of a, um, um, a needs analysis from the top down that, that like a platform uh, instead of technologies like Cloud Foundry, it could be what we need? It really came from a number of quarters, but the tipping force was from our infrastructure area. And as we looked like a lot of large companies do at what's the future of infrastructure, both in the data center, um, themes that have been emerging for many years in cloud. There were a number of us that are leaders at Allstate that came from a backing, banking background, so we had seen uh, previous era changes, and prior to Cloud Foundry been instantiated, it had worked more in homegrown past, and seen that opportunity, both from the developer end, but also from the infrastructure end. So when Andy Zitney had joined us, he's with McKesson now, but he had joined and was our CTO for a period of time, and had background from Chase and PayPal and various areas. He came in and built our platform team and really uh, looked in their, through their selection process, determined Cloud Foundry was a great option for us and something that we could grow with over time to start meeting the needs. But it was really an interest of saying, hey, let's let infrastructure get out of the way, provide the foundation for the developers and let the developers innovate great software for the business, but let's let the platform take care mm -hmm. of things. He, he brought early awareness to a lot of those factors. Yeah, I think the joke is that you, nobody should be writing their own cryptographic software anymore. <laughs> nobody should be writing a distributed key value pair store anymore. And, and you know, the Cloud Foundry people will tell you nobody should be writing their own pass mm -hmm. any platform anymore. Like, let some, that's hard enough. Let somebody else take care of yeah, it. Yeah, maybe if you're a PhD student or uh, <laughs> researching the next great idea, but in terms of being from within an enterprise whose primary role is to serve customers in a different way. Again, it just mm -hmm. takes care of uh, 
a lot of the lifting. And that, that took a while when we introduced it for some people to understand. People would say to me, why are you adding another layer? And getting them to understand the power of the abstraction mm -hmm. and that that's what we're really doing. We're lifting up above so we don't have to be worried so much about the exact infrastructure we're sitting on. That, that upskilling process that you're, you're talking about, that training process, uh, both from the developer side and the operational side, uh, there's a learning curve. Uh, and some people embrace it, some people maybe not so much. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, how, you, how people have uh, you know, gotten, gotten trained up on the new skills, how you're, help, you're helping people uh, do yes. that? Yeah, yeah. so in our, uh, in our platform team, it really started with Matt Curry, who joined us a few years ago. He's an awesome engineer, but also a great leader. And he really set the tone culturally for the platform team to be a learning environment and for people to share a lot. So a lot's really happened where he's led the hiring and training and seeding of the platform team. From a developer perspective, when we looked across the enterprise and realized we've got a couple thousand developers that have worked for us uh, you know, for decades across different areas, we needed to do something more to reach scale more quickly. Initially, we were pairing with Pivotal, and that was effective in getting some good results, but we thought in order to make that scale and scale more quickly, we wanted to take a different approach. So we partnered with Galvanize and brought in-house a 12-week boot camp style approach. Yeah. Opal, one of the things that really resonated in your keynote, you talked about painting a picture uh, as to how this technology really impacted your customers. You know, there was a tree, there was a sun, there's your know, labs environments and roots. Maybe uh, you know, if you could tease that out a little bit for us and, and explain how, how this technology really impacts you know, your users. Yes, well, one, I think in use of that metaphor, it kind of acknowledges the environment is somewhat organic, right? The platform's still growing a lot, the ecosystem we're in, we have the chance to both contribute to the community and to take from it as it develops. So, uh, so to me, that's a, a really strong notion. And the notion that, uh, particularly in leadership, we're kind of, we're gardeners in a way, right? We're fostering uh, the growth. And so I thought that uh, it's a really good example of thinking about as a tree or any plant really grows, it needs a variety of factors. So I said, the, our customers are like the sun to us. They're the reason for existing and that's what we're all orbiting around. Um, but the air represents all the business opportunity. The winds of change have been blowing mightily for years. And the soil in which the tree is planted is like all the great, the cloud foundry instances, it's the training, it's the new role definition, it's the holistic program that really defines how we'll work as a digital product team. We put all that together and we need constant leadership support uh, on a number of grounds to really make sure we take and cement the change. And what about the developers? Where do they fit in this kind of natural organic like they're, analogy? They're the, you know, they're the growing, thriving, strong plant itself. And so, uh, you know, I think both we aim for each individual product team and each individual, whether it's a developer, a product manager, or designer, to be continuously growing and using their creativity, discipline, strength to bring us great business results. And then when you kind of back out and you look at our network of product teams, that's a really important thing to me in an enterprise of our scale is very few breakthroughs will occur, I believe, because of a single digital product innovation. It's really in the ability to knit together different products to provide an end-to-end -end service or experience to the customer. Hey, uh, how do you look at the public cloud? Uh, you know, Cloud Foundry allows, uh, we were talking about with Bosch, a multi-cloud environment. Where does your applications and deployments live today and, and how do you look at the public cloud? Yeah, we're still exploring all the possibilities. Uh, Matt and his team have been very active looking. So we started with a on-premise uh, installation for Cloud Foundry. And for myself leading a development team, it's great as the platform, as they look to kind of burst out into a multi-cloud environment, it'll be transparent to my team as long as we're operating to run on our Cloud Foundry instance, they can take us wherever we need to go. I know they've been doing a lot of work with our security team and other areas of the company to determine what's the right way to forge the path forward. They've got, I had a meeting with them Friday and they've got some great uh, design and things in the works. So I think we're, in the next six months to a year, going to be looking at some real strong expansion of our cloud strategy. Yeah, and how, how does security fit into this whole picture? Uh, obviously a major concern for every CIO these days, so. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to us we've taken a real security first approach. And so we've been, our CISO team has been wor working really closely with Matt and the cloud engineers and they're just defining how do we want to segregate parts of our environment 
how do we kind of follow the principle of trust no one and build security in from the get-go. Again, it's a little bit like the platform itself. I'm confident when they get a solution in place, it'll minimize the burden on my developers, and we can just you know, have a security-first mindset but have a lot of the hygiene taken care of by the platform implementation. Yeah, again, it's something you don't want to differentiate on, you want to be built into the, the foundation, or, yes. or the roots, maybe, of our metaphor here. Yes, there uh, we go. Opal, can you talk a little bit about the apps? Uh, obviously, you, we've talked, you, you've used, you, we've already used words like scale here today. Um, you know, I'll say it's a big company, you've got lots of apps, legacy apps, many different kinds of stacks, generations mm -hmm. of, of uh, technology. How are you uh, choosing uh, what what ends up being uh, this greenfield and or things that are being moved or in term, you know, how are you all looking at all the different applications inside the company, uh, where they live on which cloud and how they get modernized? We're uh, letting the business needs and strategy really drive how we prioritize, and it really is a a matter of a lot at this point triage and prioritization because we've got a a rich set of opportunities. So when we're building new apps in house. We're certainly looking to take a cloud first approach. And again, that's a lot of that's uh, within our own walls today, but we know that with the Foundry, it, it offers us the option to burst out at a later date and leaves us some optionality. Uh, we're the Allstate Corporation, the Allstate brand of insurance is what's best known, but in claims I also support, we have a brand called Encompass Insurance, and so we're looking to provide support for multiple companies and build technology that can serve everyone. There are a lot of cases too in an ecosystem like ours where we're working with third party vendors and they're increasingly offering cloud-based solutions. So uh, again, we do a lot of work with them from the security and compliance perspective to make sure that, uh, that their strategy is consistent with ours to make sure we take appropriate care of our customer data. And then uh, I personally get really excited by the refactoring opportunities. I'm really fortunate in claims that our our core claim system was implemented just about 10 years ago, so it, I call it legacy now, but it's not you know, <laughs> as far back to the dark ages as some of the other systems that you'll find within the walls of enterprises. But it was built as like our last big monolithic implementation and we've been doing decoupling there. So whenever we know we're going to do a decoupling, we look for what opportunity to implement new cloud native microservices and again, just stand that up in our environment with the platform team. I wanted to ask also about I don't know, culture and, 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 and technology adoption. We're sitting here in the middle of Silicon Valley. Uh, this cloud phenomenon driven a lot from Silicon Valley. Uh, sometimes people think, ah, you know, this cloud native stuff, it's for startups, it's for the kids, it's for whatever. Uh, you know, you're based in the Midwest, and, and I also, I'm an Illinois boy myself, uh, you know, you get sometimes kind of um, uh, an inferiority complex about, you know, the, the, the coast, both coasts, but this, is, this does not seem to be a coastal phenomenon, this does not seem to be uh, something that only a startup can learn. Uh, I mean, this is, this is you know, Allstate, mature company, you all, it, it, and, and uh, with a Midwestern base, and can you kind of talk a little bit about uh, was there, I mean, was there anything about that in, in terms of people saying, oh, we can't do that here, or, or, or that sort of thing? No, no, I mean, in fact, I think it's a global phenomena. Yeah. I was living for almost two years in Belfast, Northern Ireland. We have a division there, Allstate, Northern Ireland, and we saw a lot of foundry activity among different companies there. Of course, there's a European summit every year as well. So I think it's just, it's just good common sense. A lot of us, again, before Cloud Foundry came through were working with the different predecessor technologies and Spring and VMware and you know, various aspects and kind of knitting, knitting together which felt like reinventing the wheel. So it's just good business sense, good common sense when there's a solution that you can leverage. I think it's just like you were, you were commenting earlier, right? If it's there and you can use it and then you can allow the focus to be on what really differentiates you as a business to your customers. That's the way to go. Oh, oh, the last question I have for you is that either commentary on any of the announcements that were made this week, or are, are there any things that you're hoping uh, really for either you know, Pivotal, uh, the foundation in general, or your ecosystem that would make your life easier that's kind of on, on your to-do list for, from uh, the vendor side? Uh, there's so much to take in. I think yeah. it's probably still going to take me a week to absorb all the implications. I mean, it's, it's great to watch the dynamics going on. I think Microsoft joining the foundation, that's a very, uh, very good move, because we've had, you know, we have so many different technologies within our enterprise, so to understand how different vendors are working and, and playing, you know, 
together in some, in some way um, is really good. I think Abby and the foundation, they've been fantastic about always soliciting input from members like us and members of the community about what we want to see. Um, for me, it's always a big eye towards scale. Again, we're, we're a huge enterprise. There are even larger enterprises here that have started running. And if, when, when this really becomes the, we all achieve the aspirational goals and it becomes the day-to-day -day backbone, it's just making sure this is really hardened to run at true enterprise weight. And I think that the enterprise scale of the future is going to be even bigger than what it has been historically. Because with all these new products, we're we're driving an appetite towards greater and greater customer interaction. I saw that in banking 10 years ago, and I think we're going to see it in insurance more and more. So we just want to know that we're all working together to, to get that, that strength and that power that the customer needs. Opal Perry, really appreciate you sharing all stage digital transformation with us and our audience. Uh, for John and myself, we'll be back with more coverage here from the Cloud Foundry Summit. Thanks for watching theCUBE. Thank you.